guys, it's Tony with Backwoods Biker Magazine and Wood Tramp Outdoors. Hammer77 wrote and asked this question. What is the system that I see in your videos, how you hang your gear? And number two, what is a Marlin Spike? Hang tight. I'm going to answer those two questions. Uh, Hammer, thanks for the uh, question, but you're not the only one uh, that has written and has asked about that little gadget that I use. It's not really a gadget, it's just a little simple system to use uh, 36, number 36 bank line that's got a bowling on one end and just a running in here that I happen to make a lark's head like so and I keep a toggle with me that I have chamfered both ends so it doesn't split on me and a little groove that holds on to it. And the reason I don't put a static knot in there, like a stop knot, is because you never know how high that you need to be able to hang your gear. Okay, so, so that answers one question. It's a very, very simple system that I was taught years ago. Um, I've used all different sizes of cordage. It doesn't matter what the size is. It just happens to be this is light easy to pack you know that's why I use this this is about three feet you know um, and I've got several of them in different bags some of them are this long some of them are six feet you know just what I had around whenever I picked it up and said I need to put one in another bag but uh, my dad taught me that years ago when I was young and uh, I ended up teaching a lot of other guys in, in the Boy Scouts I actually taught some guys in the Marines on, on how to use one as well uh, but it's great for hanging anything that you need off of the ground, uh, whether it's, um, you know, a, a bag, uh, if it's a, a food bag, whatever. You know, you just don't want it on the ground. I'm a guy, I don't like my bag on the ground at all. Uh, I had a bag one time when I was in the Marine Corps that was on the ground. I was in the mountains of California and uh, picked it up in a big old tarantula crawled across my hand uh, and about killed me. Not because it was poisonous, I about died from a heart attack. Uh, so I don't like to leave stuff on the ground here in the uh, eastern woodlands where I'm at. We have copperheads. A little further south, we've got timber rattlers. Uh, we've got all kinds of things that can crawl up in your bag, you know, when you set it down that want a nice little home. So that's why I use that system to get it off of the ground. <clears throat> but, you know, it's just not the bowling it's just not that loop, but the key to it is having some way to be able to put this around the tree, right? And the way you do it is you have your bowline, and you put that loop into the bowline, and then you just tighten it up as you go, and that toggle tightens down, or this bank line tightens down on that toggle and holds it in place okay now <clears throat> this toggle that I have is actually for the other end that holds the gear in place so that means you gotta have something else Now you can fashion a toggle like this that will serve for that or you can use something like this that we call the woodsman spike it's not a marlin spike it's a woodsman spike and it does the job for you like this, you tighten that down, it stays up against the tree for you, will not go anywhere. And then down on this end is where you'll put your lark's head, where your bag or whatever it is that you're wanting to carry. See, it all hangs up off the tree like this, and it'll carry a lot of weight. <clears throat> now, what is a, a, a marlin spike? Uh, well, let me show you the pictures in here. And while the pictures are up there and you're studying them, you're going to see different different pictures, okay? The ones with the, that are made out of bone are, are primitive. Um, and I think they're from three, maybe four different eras um, that where they come from. And uh, it is a seaman's tool that they used in order to take a, a rope that was built on three strands. Most of them were three-strand ropes. 
and the marlin spike was made to be able to open up the middle of that wherever they wanted to build a static loop that would be there forever. Uh, they didn't have carabiners as we know them, so they would open up that rope, create a loop, and then they would braid that rope back in and then lash that braid all together, and it was a forever type of lash. It was not going to go anywhere, and they use it for big sailing ships, you know, for the tall ships, um, and sailors today even use that, that particular system. Um, you, can, you can see that as well. I wanted to be able to show you what that is, so... What that tool you're seeing there, that last one with the groove, is the most modern style of marlin spike that's out there. And that's not what you're seeing. Whenever you're watching a YouTube video, you might be in class and you see a guy that has something. Um, you know, it's, it's, that's not what that is. Even the new ones that you see, like on Amazon, uh, that have been uh, uh, machined, those are, those are not really woodsman's either. Those are, are, you know, a modified marlin spike, you know, to help you open up um, a three-braided rope. Not like a polyester rope or a polyethylene rope, not anything like that. You know, same stuff that, uh, or a nylon rope. Uh, it's like an oversized paracord that has a jacket on it. That's not what it's for. It's for the braided ropes. <clears throat> but... You know, as far as uh, taking those out in the woods, no. This is, is what we call our woodsman spike. We hand forge these, uh, and they are available on woodtrampgear.com uh, to purchase. And I think they're $16, and the shipping's like 4 bucks, something like that. Real cheap. Uh, but uh, it's a lifetime uh, a tool that you'll have forever. Now, this one here happens to be the one I've, you know, carried around with me it's a little bit bigger the ones that we put on the website are are a little bit smaller they're quarter inch this is this is three or yeah three eighths and those are quarter inch uh, because they don't need to be very big and we've actually sharpened them down a little bit more than this one here you see they're all hand forged hammered down got a lanyard hole in it and this particular one is not an all and you couldn't you couldn't poke poke yourself in the skin with this one here uh, but the ones on the website we are that we are offering are now available with a, a point to use as an all as well if, if you would like to. Uh, but you know that's what these are for, and they're they're easy to carry. Uh, they're light, and uh, you can put a lanyard on them like you know like I have. I put a lanyard on everything that it might be missing. Now this one here is a snake knot with two different colors of paracord. I don't recommend doing that. You know, uh, half orange, half black means you can halfway see it. And I don't really care for that. But why would I want to choose something like this over, uh, let's say, a wooden toggle? Well, <clears throat> as the winter approaches, and if you're a winter camper or, or a hunter that, that takes a bag out or wants to hang his bow or his, his firearm <clears throat> or hers, I'm being sexist and didn't mean to be, whatever, you want gear up off of the ground. Um, as winter uh, comes on, the green wood that you would really want to use for your spike uh, is no longer available. And it dries out, and if you've got heavier gear, it might break and your gear falls down on the ground. When you have something that's made out of high carbon steel like this, <clears throat> it's not going to break under any conditions. You know, uh, as I said, we make these in quarter inch configurations. Uh, you can put about 100 pounds of gear on that, and it won't bend or break either one. Uh, so that's why we choose to use these versus a wooden type of, of toggle that would go in with the loop. Remember, you do this, you got your bowling on one end, then you create another bite, that loop right there, and just stick it in your bowling. And that will go in like that, and it sticks around the tree like so, and it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to hold your gear, all right? Now, if you decide that you want to build your own toggle, just make sure that you chamfer both ends. It needs to be about four inches long for that. <clears throat> and you also want to put a groove in there. So I put the groove right in the middle. That keeps your um, spike from slipping out. You don't want that to happen, you know. And same thing goes on the other end for your toggle, you know. But if you'd rather go 
with a permanent solution that'll last you for this is a lifetime uh, piece of gear. It's guaranteed for life. You know, if it breaks for any under circumstances, whatever it is, uh, they'll be replaced for you because yeah, I mean you're not going to break this uh, for real. <clears throat> so um, I hope that answers your your question. And uh, you know, it's a great piece of gear to add to your kit. And they, you can see how small this stuff is. I mean, I put one in every one of my bags. Because, again, I don't want critters climbing up and surprising me, whether it's a wood tick or a nasty little snake that might uh, reach out and bite me. Thanks again for the question. It was a great question, and uh, I hope that that helped you out. You know, we're using woodsman spikes. We're not using marlin spikes, although a lot of people call them marlin spikes, you know. So, till next time, you guys ride free, you live free, and as always, you be safe out there.